people perceive agriculture as not only a dirty job but an elderly person's job. However, today we have George Owala to give a different opinion. So George, welcome. Okay. A lot of young people shun agriculture. Is it what you trained for? No. I started uh, my first training on uh, electrical and electronics engineering. That was at a Railway Training Institute. There, after graduation, I lived in Nairobi for some time. And while we were, while I was on attachment, I realized we purchase food stuff, which are agricultural prod produce at very high prices. So I thought of what if I do agriculture and produce, for example, onions. And then we used to purchase onions at five shillings. Mm. So I thought to myself, here I'm struggling here to look for a job. And uh, we have a farm down there. I can rent farms and produce the onions we buy here. We can now produce the, the onions at home and sell them to the market. That's when I, I thought to revert back home and start producing, start indulging in agriculture. OK. Yes. Uh, you rented farms. Yes, I rented farms. Uh -huh. Majorly, I rented farms because at the time when I was coming back, uh -huh. the family land was occupied. We had a family dispute on the land, so I couldn't operate it. Oh, so I went okay. to rental farms for, for peace. You know, whenever there's peace, there's progress. Yeah. yeah. So what were you producing? When I came in, I started producing onions. I went from onions, I moved to cabbages. Sukuma wiki oh. and capsicum. Nice. Yes. And then I found out that we, when I do products like cabbages and onions, I harvest once. So for you to run, you, you, the cabbages and the onions take up to two to three months or some four for them to mature for the market. So for you to run them well, you need a continuous fine cash flow mm. so, so as to maintain the farms. So you, that's when I came in with, with the, I came in with this kumawiki with mm -hmm. girls because after a month they are mature. You can now start plucking them and taking the, them to the market. Capsicum too, you, you can harvest continuous, continuously so that you get the amount to run the farm, mm -hmm. to buy pesticides, to do cultivation and all that. Okay. Yeah. Now that is where I started from. So you said that is where you started from, cabbage, skuma, where are you now? Right now I'm... Um, doing i'm um, specializing majorly on dairy production mm -hmm. where i do dairy cows mm -hmm. uh, where when i talk of dairy i mean keeping cattle for for milk okay. yes majorly for milk mm -hmm. and so i do dairy production i also do bee bee product bee keeping uh, that's we keep uh, bees for honey right for uh, right now we do bees especially for honey, as much as the other bee products like wax and uh, nectar and among others, what I'm capable of harvesting at this point is just the honey. Yeah. I also do poultry production, that is for meat and eggs. I also do dairy production, uh, goat production, and that is goat for meat. Yeah, We do the indigenous goats, they are, they are hardy and they survive better in our environment. Okay. Yes. And if I may ask, is this on a small scale or a large scale? I can talk of small scale right now because we are starting. Mm -hmm. It's just most of this stuff, most of these uh, programs, we are, we're just starting them. They haven't been in action for long. Okay. Yes. And uh, so most people think that agriculture near what was there, but you're a young person. How have you maneuvered through it? Yeah, the first thought that hit me mm. was... Uh, the idea that when you have, when you want to do agriculture, you have to retire first. Oh, yeah, true. So when I came right from college, my parents had paid some amount there. 
my dad was, was happy mm. because he used to do agriculture. I was when I was born, he was, he was already in. He, yes, he was a teacher, but he was already in agriculture when he was teaching. Mm. So he kept on motivating me. Look after the cows. Look after the cows. He had uh, he, he had one indigenous cow. He, he crossed it and then later brought in a pure breed that was a a freshian. Mm. A freshian is the the kind the kind you see there. That's a black and white. It's a it's a freshian cow. Oh, okay. Yes. So we, he welcomed me. And I, he told me now, this, this is the right way to go. But my mom was like, my son, you need to get a job. <laughs> you see, when you get old, you need a pension. Mm. You can get sick even tomorrow. And you need, a, you need to be employed with government so that you, they, even if you get sick, we'll pay you. Mm-hmm. The, the government will pay you. I told her, wait until you see the product of what I want to do here. Okay. Yeah, I, I was like, I can now, if... His pension is what she wants me to earn. I can rear the, I can do the horticulture, mm-hmm. rear the cows, make money, build rentals, so that when I get old, now the rentals will pay me. Okay. Yes. But the the, the kind of setting that I'm having is not ki- the kind that will collapse when I get old, mm-hmm. because I'm working on incorporating other people, training more people, so that when the when I I I now get old, as it said. The program will run, meaning I don't die. The program doesn't die when I die. Okay. Yes. So the people that you're training are they young people like you? Young people, especially I, I train uh, majorly school-going kids. Mm-hmm. Yes, when they develop love, because I love the idea when the young people are incorporated into this business. Yeah, when they come, when the, when they see what I do. They come in when I, I'm preparing animal feed and they like it, so they grow with it. It's easier to train them than to train adults. Uh. But then the adults who come in, like for example in the poultry sector, mm-hmm. have had a lot of visits from adults. They come in, they, 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 they like what I do, and then they pick the, the, the chicken from me. We call it the seed. The, 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 we call it the seed. They pick the seed. Okay. Those are the junior, the, the young chicken, mm-hmm. and then they go, the chicks, they go and start the, the poultry, and o- over and over again they will be calling for advice. How do I do this? How do we handle this disease? How do we, how do we feed them? What feed do we give now? Mm-hmm. And then you find that uh, on a, a larger scale, you get more people getting into agriculture, even those who were previously not interested. I would love to congratulate you for incorporating other young people about what you're doing. So if I want to join your enterprise about the dairy, the poultry, what do I need? How do I need to prepare? Now for starters, mm. uh, for a startup, it depends now if you want to do the animals. The first, the first thing that you must consider is the housing. Okay. Yes. Once you get the housing, depending on what you want to do, if you want to do the, the dairy, you get your housing. And then if you want to do the poultry or even the goats, there's a specialized uh, uh, housing for them. And then you consider, of the, you consider the feeds. Where will I get the feeds? Will I purchase uh, commercial feeds or will I have to grow my own? Depending on the amount of capital you have and the resources available, you'll choose. I want, uh, you'll choose to start. It's always good to start with a reasonable number and then grow as you learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't have to start with 10 or maybe a large number. You can ha- start with a few, be it poultry, be it, be it uh, uh, dairy or even the goats. Mm-hmm. Whichever enterprise, you start on a lower scale and then you grow with, with time. Mm-hmm. And then, before any, any, the one factor that you always have to consider before starting up, the enterprise is what is my goal is my goal to produce for consumption or for the market if it is for the market what is my market where is my market who will buy this produce because it will be pointless to produce without the market before i produce i first think of the market if i've seen the gap the scarcity in for example goat meat in the market I look, I look around, when I, when I walk around, I want to buy a goat or find goat meat at the market. For example, in my local area here, you'll never find a goat, a goat butchery. Mm. 
So when uh, I saw that 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 uh, goal, I now ca- came in with the, the the goat production idea. But I now realize again that you cannot, pr- I cannot produce goats sufficient for the whole market that we have. Mm-hmm. So I encourage others. As I encourage them, you'll find when they want to to, to start up the the project, mm-hmm. they'll come to my farm. You know, go- you have good breeds. Give me one. Mm-hmm. So you also find your 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 market from encouraging others to join you. Okay. Yes. That is so impressive. Yes. And I love the idea that ukiona kitu unasema si ifanye peke yangu. Acha ni let him to mwingine ndani. And that is so good. Yes. That is so good. So you talked about having a goal. Uh what goals did you have when you started and have you achieved them? Yes, when I when I started I used to watch on YouTube the big farms that are abroad you find them producing milk in plenty they have a lot of cows and then uh, they process their milk so my goal was that i was and still is that i reach to a level where i can produce milk sufficient to run uh, a processing plant mm-hmm. and not me alone in cooperating other farmers or other interested parties so that we can produce because when you start the processing when you start to process milk it will need a lot of milk for example to process yogurt needs a lot of a lot of uh, milk mm. yeah input that a single farmer cannot, cannot yeah. but you see anytime you, you you go you go alone you don't go too far mm. you might move fast but you won't go too far so uh, i had the goal of being in a position where i can produce milk add value to it package it and now put it out to the market and this involves i producing uh, dairy cows that will produce for my my farm mm. and then also the best part of dairy is when you start selling heifers when i talk of heifers these are uh, dairy cows that the female cows that are uh, between birth mm. between uh, maturity and are giving birth okay yes mm. yeah for after after it's it reaches puberty up to, up to the point it gives it birth, birth it's called a heifer mm. they are the seed that we sell to other farms to produce so once you my breeding stock stock is full now i'll start selling out the the heifers to other farms so that you incorporate more and more people into dairy production mm. then you become a dairy zone where it's easier to attack the market where when you move collectively than when you move alone mm-hmm. this will bring about consistency in the market such that they know when we go to that milk center or milk plant we'll I always must get something uh, must get extra. good quality milk mm-hmm. we also have to look at the quality of our produce what are we producing mm-hmm. and uh, it should be of of a uh, high grade Yes. about the quality what yes. causes the difference in the milk quality is it the cows or what what really causes that the milk quality or composition as we call it mm. is determined by factors such as one the breed of the cow mm. if it's a freshian for example a freshian has a lot of milk it has a lot of milk it can produce up to 50 liters a day wow yes mm-hmm. but the butterfat content mm-hmm. is low compared to other breeds like the ashire and the jersey for example mm-hmm. the ashire produces up to 30 up to 30 liters a day but it has a it's the, the milk from the ashire cow has higher butterfat content mm-hmm. than uh, the the freshian so that is on the breed if it is an ashire it will have not so much milk compared to freshian but lower butterfat but higher butterfat content okay and then the, for the freshian high, high uh, amounts of milk low butterfat content so and the other factor that also affects the quality of the milk mm-hmm. is the feed you feed to your animals mm-hmm. and also the environment what do you mean by environment when i talk of environment is where are you producing the milk the environmental conditions such as the weather mm-hmm. is it warm enough is it cold that is one the, 
the, the weather will determine the, the feed quality if you are growing for your farm, mm -hmm. will determine the feed quality. The environment also entails the milk handlers. How hygienic? Oh, yeah. How hygienic are the milk handlers? Are they clean? Mm -hmm. Are they? Uh, do they handle milk correctly? Because you'll find others uh, will want to make money so fast. Mm -hmm. One thing I didn't tell you about agriculture is not a get-rich-fast business. You have to be patient. Mm -hmm. When you 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 can start, uh, once you start, you have to wait, and you you trust the process. Yeah, yeah. So you grow. With experience, mm. you grow with the time. So you'll find those who come in, in into the enterprise, they want to get rich first. They come with the these are I want more money first. Mm. You'll find they tamper with the milk composition. Some will add water. Yeah, some will add. Uh, we call it ungangano, the wheat flour. Some will add uh, starch. The starch is the is the ingredient we use in in the preparation of yogurt mm -hmm. yeah so it's not supposed to be added to fresh milk but because they want to add water and maintain the thickness of the milk they add water and also mix with 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 the starch so that when they go to the market they'll have milk that looks like this quality milk but mm -hmm. it's tampered with and how can i know the difference as a buyer as a buyer it the the market is so smart you realize it when you use the milk mm. one but then if you leave the milk to settle for some time all the additives will settle oh, to the okay. yeah the residue will settle to the bottom mm -hmm. and then when you when you observe it in a clear glass you can know this is not quality milk but just by mere observation if you have quality milk and milk that is uh, is not of good quality you'll you'll notice mm -hmm. yes even when you, you're on test Okay. Yes. So, what is the feeding process of your poultry of your cows? How do you feed them? When I talk of poultry, mm. I do feed formulation. Mm. There are two ways. Once the, the the animals, overall, the animals need two kind of feeds. They need roughages mm. and concentrates. For poultry, I do. Once I, I keep them indoors, their systems of rearing poultry. So I keep poultry indoors for the first two months. That after the two months they'll be they, they'll be big enough so that they would, they would uh, escape predators. Mm. Yeah, when I talk of the eagle and the and the like. So I release them to free range after after, after the two sec, after two months. Okay. So when they are. In the, the first two months, I feed them on commercial feed. I buy a chick mash at the right stage. I buy grower mash. I also you you also must supply water because water is the major part of their nutrition. You supply them with water continuously. Mm -hmm. There's no time that you should that they, they should exist without water. So you have to supply them with drinking water, mm -hmm. clean drinking water. All the all the time and feed. Uh, after the two months, now I start producing my own feed. I do formulation. I buy ingredients from the vendors at the market from factories like maize milling factories. I go there for maize jam mm. and wheat bran. I bring them in. I take in maize and there are a lot more ingredients that are involved in the process of feed formulation. That's what I formulate for my adult chicken. Okay. Yeah. So so as to reduce on production cost, and uh, I do the vaccinations, and always I have to ensure that uh, I always have to ensure that their premise is hygienic enough. And you'll realize when they're walking outside, they also get the grasses and some other ants, so they. Thing. get the supplements yeah. yeah yeah but whenever you making we are making feeds for the chicken mm. we have to consider the the formulation uh, uh, process. Uh, process so that your feed is all inclusive it's balanced oh. so that they get the proteins they want they get the, the carbohydrates and all the the fats they need yes okay. and then for the for the cows 
they also feed they feed majorly on roughages that involves napier grass uh, and we have a lot of other grasses we have bracaria we have rhodes grasses we have legumes such as uh, lucerne mm. those are what we feed to the goats and uh, and the uh, and the cows you the best way to prepare your feed is to harvest it at the right stage mm. so, of course this all this fodder they have different stages of harvest of harvesting when they're mature for harvesting you harvest the, the the feed and then you choose whether you want to feed directly or store we call it food feed pre- preservation mm. you can feed to them directly and some you, if there's a, during plenty during plenty that is during the the rainy seasons that there's a lot of feed animals for feed you feed some directly mm. but some you dry and store for uh, for future use oh. because du- there'll be scarcity during se- dry seasons so in most cases when i harvest i don't feed i don't take it directly to the animal mm. i sun dry it for 24 hours mm. that is about 2 days and then i pass it through the chaff cutter so that it can be ground to a form that is easily taken by that can be easily taken by the animal mm. the best practice is now to incorporate the the, the feed with the sweetener to in, improve its palatability i have noticed from your explanation there is a lot of technical agricultural stuff mm. so kama mimi ni am a new farmer who wants to get into agriculture do i go for training to learn the poultry names the fresh air ashayas do i get to have trainings in that it's not a must okay yes so how do i get to know that why once you start mm. there are farmers mm. who are already existent and a good example is me okay yes we mentor others mm. so if you start just a little mentorship like you be if you ask if you you come for example you want to buy a calf from me or you want to buy seed stock that is chicks from me mm. you'll take them from me and you'll be continuing I'll, I'll continually follow up and you'll also be following up with me but you don't have to buy from me for me to advise you mm. we offer information this is only in agriculture that we offer information for, for free, free. Uh. yes once you visit me i just tell you this what we do how, this how to do it and apart from that the government has extension offices mm. as much as there are not as many as required they are not uh, as many to 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 actually offer the services required in all the places but there are some we can access them at the office a few of them visit yes uh, but uh, we can always, always get the information from them mm. and the, the veterinary officers also they come in when they come to treat they they advise you on what to what to do mm. yes so uh, information is also available online mm. so if you can access the internet some of the information about how to well rear your animals or even do your cropping you you can access the information online that is if you cannot access uh, one on one service uh-huh. yes yeah and since you are knee deep into agriculture if someone were to offer you another IT job would you jump for it there are factors that will determine whether i go for it uh, or not okay and the major factor is where is the job located mm. if the job is located in my county meaning i can operate from home i'm okay because i need extra money to develop my farm i need a better shed than the one i'm having now mm. so the amounts i'm getting as profit I pump them back into the farm and I use them to pay my fee and sustain. Just like I said I stay here with mom. Yeah. yeah, we work together when I'm in school. She takes care of, of the animals. We need to sustain our livelihood. We need to run the farm. We need to pay bills. So the profits I'm making from the farm. Yes, they are not as sufficient as I may require. Mm. So if someone was to offer me another job in my line of profession i would take it to support my farm mm. it will really work good but it de- 
depends on the location. What I know is not possible mm -hmm. is for me to now go to the urban centers and stay there because I have to attend to the animals like on a daily basis. Whenever I go to school, I have to report back home every weekend to ensure that they're, they're sprayed. Yes, because another thing I didn't talk about is when you have all this livestock, one thing you have to take good consideration of is control of parasites. Most of the people doing poultry, they do not, they do not deworm the poultry, they do not uh, control the external. We have inter internal and external parasites. The major one for the cows is ticks. You'll find that uh, there's a, a tick, a tick that once it 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 uh, stings your cow, it will cause disease. That's very difficult to to treat. But prevention is better than cure, just as always. Mm. So I have to always be here during the weekends to ensure all the parasites are controlled correctly using the correct procedure because a wrong procedure will also cause harm to the animal mm. so most of the the technical stuff i do them myself okay. yes and uh, there are so many young people out there hanging on to their qualifications and with their unemployment frustrations what can you tell them the best approach mm. when you are frustrated maybe in your job or or uh, whatever it is that you're practicing or you don't have a job you 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 have qualifications you have your papers is first view your interest mm -hmm. what is my interest then you follow your interest friends come in for mentorship but the first thing i asked us a question what can you do if it is in the agricultural sector, what okay. do you like? Oh, okay. Yes, you'll find some. They studied, for example, a different course, uh, and then their interest maybe is some technical job. They want to do some wiring. It's very difficult to, to con convert this particular person who wants to do electric, electrically, uh, electrical stuff, mm -hmm. to now come and start rearing goats. But if you're interested in agriculture which part of agriculture because agriculture is very large and it's interesting if you love it if you got love for it mm. you create you will always create a, when i used to, if i when once when i'm doing my cropping i would just take my time and go sit at the farm and see how the wind blows to the to the plants mm. you spend some one hour just watching the and when we are handling the cows and and uh, even the chicken you give them feed and then you start watching it's lovely it's a best the best way to to spend your time so that you don't have a lot of free time to waste or to indulge in mm. in practices that are, uh, affect your life negatively. Mm. Yes. Nice. Mm. Actually, from hearing your story, I have been forced to reflect. And I would love to thank you and congratulate you for the much you've come yeah. and keeping on the legacy that your dad left you and you've not given up. I would love to congratulate you Thank on you. that. Thank you so much. I would love to ask you too. Have you felt that reflective impulse to do what you need to do, despite the unemployment frustration, despite the not knowing where to go after campus or after having a qualification? What else do you have? As he has said, what can you do? Reflect on that. What can you do? Aside from the paper, what can you do? If you do not have that employment, what do you have? Do you have people that you can go ask? Do you have mentors that you can sit down with and learn about it? Think about that. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. This is the way.